Hello students, this is Oshini from Chinta.com. In this video, we will learn a little bit of geometry for mathematical Olympiads. In fact, I will explain the concept of radical axis in very simple terms and we will use a tool from coordinate geometry to learn a bit of surprising fact about radical axis. There is another video in this channel about it. We use pure geometry there. That's also fun. You should check that out. Okay, so but let's look at the main idea here. Suppose you have a circle, which is let's call it gamma. And suppose there is a center of the circle is O. Now you take any point on the plane of the circle. So maybe the point is inside the circle, on the circle, outside the circle. Let's take a point outside P. What we are trying to do here is measure the distance of P from the center of the circle or from the circle itself. That is one way to think about it. There is a deeper way to actually think about this concept of radical axis and power of a point. The deeper way is this, that what is the, what is a, an invariant of P with respect to the circle gamma. You know, mathematicians are always looking for invariants. You give me a point, you give me a circle. What is an invariant of the circle and the point, how they interact with each other? So one very interesting invariant is sometimes known as the chord rule or the secant rule. What you do is you just draw a secant from the point P to the circle. Let's call this point A, let's call this B. Then the secant PAB has a very beautiful property. It is that PA times PB is an invariant for the gamma circle and the point P. What that means is, if I take another secant, let's say P A prime B prime, the product would be same. The value of the product P A prime times P B prime will be same as P A times P B. If I take some other secant like this, let's call it A double prime B double prime, then P A double prime will be equal to times P A P B double prime will be equals to P A times P B. No matter which secant you draw. That's why we call it the invariant of the point P with respect to the circle gamma. It's awesome. Why is this true? Well, I have discussed this is in, in some other video as well. This is a very common theorem in geometry. I will ask you to give a proof of it in the comment section. Let's see if you can do it. It's a very commonly available theorem. Most of you actually should know about it. If the point P is inside the circle, what happens then? Well, again, you take the point O and suppose the point P is inside the circle, then it would work for any chord. Let's say AB. If I draw any chord AB, again, PA times PB is an invariant. If, if I draw another chord, I would get exactly the same thing. So this is, this value is called the power of the point P with respect to the circle. This is called power of P with respect to the circle gamma. And why do we give this a special name? Well, because it's an invariant of the circle and the point. So we, we pay some respect to that fact and we give it a special name. It's a power of the point P with respect to gamma. There is another way to write it. Power of P is also R square minus D square. Here R is the radius of the circle and D is the distance of P from the center O. So 
R square minus D square. Now you can imagine something very interesting happening. Let's suppose if you say it's R square minus D square. Lift the absolute value sign. Just look at R square minus D square. As long as P is inside the circle, the distance D will be smaller than R, smaller than the radius. So R square minus D square will be positive, would be greater than zero. R square minus D square will be equal to zero if P is on the circumference. And R square minus D square will be less than zero if P is outside, then D will be larger than R. And it can go off to negative infinity because D can be very, very large. So what do we get? We get a sort of division of numbers, a division of numbers between positive, negative and zero with respect to the position of the point P and the circle gamma. Now my claim is this, that R square minus D square is equal to PA times PB. This is like the claim two. Remember the claim one was that this is an invariant. PA times PB is an invariant. Invariant means if you change the chord of the second, it doesn't change. The claim two is R square minus D square is PA times PB. It's equal to that invariant. Now I'll give you a clue how to go about the proof of this. Suppose this is a circle. Suppose this is a center point O and this is P. Now I, I, I draw any chord PA times PB is the invariant or that is the claimed invariant. Now what I'm going to do is I'll draw another chord which is a diameter. So it passes through P and it's a diameter. So I draw it like this. This is A prime, B prime, and this is O. Now I know that PA times PB is equal to PA prime times PB prime, because that's the definition of the power of the point. That's the claim one. And suppose this length is D, that's the distance of the point P from the origin. And this much is R, the radius of the circle. So what is PA prime? PA prime is R minus D and PB prime is R plus D. PB prime is R plus D. And we are done. This is R square minus D square. Fantastic, isn't it? Now, one last thing I want to say. I want to write all of this down. I want to write all of this down in terms of coordinate geometry. So let's quickly do that. It's not very hard actually, but the result is pretty awesome. Suppose this is the center of the circle O with the radius, a, a, with, the, with the coordinate A comma B. The coordinate is A comma B. Suppose the radius of the circle is R and we take any point P with coordinates X comma Y. What is the expression for the power of the point P with respect to this circle? Well, we know that power of P, power of P is equal to R square minus D square, absolute value. We also know that D in this case is bigger, right? So we can write it as D square minus R square. Now, what is the distance OP? We can use the distance formula. It is X minus A whole square plus Y minus B whole square. And we have this little minus R square here. So this is equal to the power of P. So if I simplify it, I will get X square plus Y square minus 2AX minus 2BY plus a squared plus b squared minus r squared. This expression, this expression is the 
power of the point P. Now, do you see something surprising in this expression? This particular expression should be very familiar with you. Okay, let me give you another hint. What if the power is zero? What does this expression signify then? Well, it is exactly this. If this is equal to zero, then this is exactly equation of a circle of radius R. So this expression is actually an expression of the equation of a circle of radius R, this, this left hand side. So power is zero means you are on the circumference of the circle. If the power is not zero, the expression which usually denotes the equation of a circle now denotes the power of the point P with respect to a given circle. It's pretty awesome. So uh, that is the story of the power of the point P. Now, last line of the entire discussion is obviously the radical axis because that's what we set out to discuss. If we have two circles, if we have two circles, first one with center A1, B1, the second one with center A2, B2, and suppose we want to find the locus of all points whose powers with respect to the two circles are equal. So with respect to gamma 1 and gamma 2, the powers are equal. If, if I want that, can you tell me the locus of such a point P? Can you tell me the locus of such a point P? Well, we just use this expression. So suppose P is x comma y, then we have x square plus y square, the power with respect to gamma 1 will be minus 2a1x minus 2b1y plus a1 square plus b1 square plus minus r square, r1 square, the radius is r1 suppose, and this radius is r2. We want that to be equal to x square plus y square minus 2a2x minus 2b2y plus a2 square plus b2 square minus r2 square. Now x square y square x square y square cancels off. These two cancels off. So we at the end of the day we have a single degree equation in x and y. So this is an expression for a straight line. So the locus of the points which have equal power with respect to the two circles is actually a straight line. One challenge question is this, can you derive how that line is related to the line joining the centers of the two circles in question? In one of the Olympiad classes, we actually described one more thing. Recently, this happened. We described the radical center and then we discovered, sort of invented or discovered, you can say, well, it's obviously very well known, but we discovered how orthocenter of a triangle is a very beautiful radical center of three very special circles or family of three very special circles. So maybe in some other video we can talk about this. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. Try the prop challenge problem and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.